was a bit dramatic but I feel it is time that I shared my thoughts and feelings on my Kamado Joe Classic 2 as it has been almost a year since I got it. Uh, I've cooked most things on it or most things that I traditionally cook on it so uh, yeah I thought I'd come on share my thoughts on it. Uh, this is the first time now I know I've talked about it quite a lot I cook on it quite a lot but this is the first proper sit down video that I have done to actually talk through what I like and what I don't like about the Kamado Joe. So if any of you guys ever wanted something for such a long time and you read up about it and you read into it and more and more that as time goes on you figure out you really want it uh, so you start saving up for it and then you reach a point where you put so much pressure on that thing that you're almost nervous to buy it just in case it doesn't live up to expectations. Do you know the whole story of you should never meet your heroes because usually they're absolute idiots? Well that's not really the case now. So, uh, trust me, before dropping that amount of money on a barbecue, I did my research on it. I asked around for people who had them, what they thought of them, what they didn't like about them. So I've got a little tip for you guys if you're ever buying gear. Uh, if you're doing your research on it and you know a few people that have them, don't ask them what they think of it or would they recommend it. The question to ask is what they don't like about it. Asking them that kind of trips them up a little bit and then they start thinking, right, there must be a few little things I don't like about it. Uh, so that's how you get the honest answers out of them. So in all of my videos where I talk about gear, I always try to include negatives in there because no barbecue is perfect and this one is no exception. But I can't quite explain what happened whenever I bought it. I don't know, again, whether it was because it cost a lot of money and I'd wanted it for so long, but something kind of switched in my cooking. So. It was almost as if I wanted to try and do the barbecue justice. So this was like my end game barbecue. It's the one I've wanted for so long. Now I had it in my yard and in my shack and I was thinking, right, I need to make sure my cooking is up to standard on this. Even though that is complete nonsense. You can cook whatever you want on it. But uh, it was kind of a little switch went in my head and I thought, right, I need to try and improve. There's a little bit of technique involved cooking on this, so I want to make sure that I get the most out of it and I get my money's worth from it. So let's talk first about what I like about it. Um, obviously, Kamado cookers are well known for being really uh, good at retaining heat and keeping nice stable temperatures. Uh, once that sort of huge ceramic mass heats up, uh, it can hold there for a pretty long time. It doesn't use a lot of fuel to get there. Uh, so I liked the fact I could switch over to using purely lump wood, I wasn't really using briquettes anymore um, and I could still get those nice long burn times, nice high heat, nice low and slow heat um, but it wasn't using a lot of fuel and I could use good quality lump wood charcoal. Now Kamado Joe are obviously really well known for uh, being innovative and uh, trying to push Kamado cooking forward. I won't mention the competitors brand but we know that they didn't maybe innovate as much as they could have and Kamado Joe kind of snuck up and stole their spot as uh, number one. As controversial as that might be, uh, that's my opinion anyway. So things like their divide and conquer system uh, really give you loads of versatility when it comes to cooking. So I came obviously from my kettle which is a 57cm cooking area. The Classic 2 has a 47cm or somewhere around 47cm cooking area. So I was kind of nervous that I was going to run out of space. But I don't think I've ever come across a situation where I've been making stuff and I ran out of room and had to light another barbecue. Uh, using that tiered level, um, I have the cast iron griddles for it as well. So you can even throw a third one in there turned around towards the back. Um, but you have them different levels to work with. You can set it up really easily for direct and indirect. 
Uh, so the versatility of those half moon grates uh, is really a big selling point for me. The next thing I really like about it is how easy it is to dial in. Now whenever I was researching it, I knew that cooking on a Camaro was really different to cooking on a kettle. So on a kettle you light your coals in a chimney starter, you tip them in and then uh, everything's already lit up. With Camaros you bring them up slowly and then you need to start shutting them down once you approach your target temperature. Now at the start I'll admit I was kind of nervous about this and it took me a long time to really set it and uh, dial in those temperatures. Then I sort of discovered I was being a little bit too cautious. So at the start I was shutting those vents down really early and it was taking such a long time to open up. And at that point I'll admit I was kind of like, oh this is going to be a pain to cook on. But then I gained a bit of confidence with it and I'm able now to get the temperature dialed in pretty fast and get it fired up. Uh, it's just something that takes time to learn. But having a barbecue that is so efficient and being able to set your vents top and bottom and it will set rock steady all day long. It's just such a, a nice experience to cook on. The touch wood, uh, I have never once come out and realised that the temperature had spiked away up uh, or the temperature had really bottomed out on it. Uh, there isn't really a lot of temperature fluctuation on it. It holds so much heat in there that even if you open the lid and close it again, it recovers really fast. So I'm sure a lot of you want to know what I don't like about it. As I said, that's the question to ask. And I was in that frame of mind where you're like, I've spent so much money on this, I don't want to diss the thing. Uh, but it isn't a perfect barbecue. Now, some of these things I feel will have been solved with the Classic 3. But I've never cooked on one, but uh, looking at the issues that I have, uh, they definitely seem to be solved there. So the first one, and probably the biggest one, is the two half moon uh, heat deflector plates. So obviously to set a Kamado up for indirect cooking, you light your fire in the bottom, you put both your heat deflector plates in, and that diffuses the heat out around the sides of those, and that's what gives you your indirect zone. However, because those are a half moon, even if they are perfectly pushed tight together, uh, I still find that a little bit of radiant heat gets up through the middle of them. So if you have a large cut of meat sitting across your grill and that centre line in between those two heat defector plates is below, you'll often find you'll get a little bit of a line there where it's more overcooked than the rest. It's not drastic but it is there and it's something that caught me out a few times when I first cooked on it. I think it was a spice cock chicken I done uh, and I realised that this weird line across the, the middle of the chicken and then I figured out that's what it was from. It was the heat coming up through. Now, the gap there must be microns because the plates fit so well together but there just seems to be that little bit that comes up through and uh, you can notice that on your food then. Once you know it's there you can work around it pretty easily. If you have a drip pan in there it gets rid of it uh, or if your food's slightly offset to one side again it's not an issue. So obviously in the Classic 3 they have the slow roller um, which is a solid plate rather than the two half moon ones. I think it still comes with the half moon uh, ceramic diffusers. Uh, but you have that solid one as well, if you want to put that in on top to get full and direct. Okay, the second thing I don't like is that the little charcoal grate in the bottom of it is quite easy to block up with small pieces of charcoal. Uh, airflow through these barbecues is key um, and that has quite small holes so if your charcoal started to burn down uh, and you end up with little bits in the bottom they can plug up those holes quite fast. Now there's lots of holes down there so they're never going to block them all up. Uh, but even the holes around the side as well, you sometimes find that there's little chunks of charcoal get in there too. At the start I think I was overfilling the charcoal chamber because uh, I found airflow through the barbecue wasn't great. Whenever I started using less charcoal, uh, I think it was Chef Eric that said if you can't see that little grate at the bottom then you have too much charcoal in. You need to be able to see somewhere for the air to get up through. Uh, and true enough, whenever I started doing that I was finding I was able to get my temperatures much higher and I was able to get the barbecue fired up a lot better. So again the Classic 3 has the ash basket in it rather than that little round plate at the bottom with the holes in it. Uh, so airflow through that I'm sure is much better. Now the last thing is, if I'm honest, I'm a little bit embarrassed saying it but it is a niggle and every time it happens to me it bugs the life out of me. But it is certainly probably more, I would say 60% user error, 40% design. And that is trying to get the half moon grates into the bottom layer so if you're not sure the divide and conquer system has a lower level for the grates and a higher level for the grates um, so if you have the barbecue fired up and you're trying to drop a grate down to get a sear on something whenever you put the edge in and try to lay it down in so the obvious way to put them in is like this and then drop it flat but when you do that it catches on the little pillar thing for the top layer 
Uh, it's such a stupid thing, it sounds like I'm just moaning for nothing, but every time I do it, if that barbecue is screaming hot, you've fired it up to try and sear something, and uh, you're in there trying to get that great move to bite, uh, you end up losing the hairs in your arms quite a bit. Now I am fully open to suggestions on that one, if you guys have a Kamado Joe, let me know how you do it, is there a specific way you twist it to get it in properly, maybe I'm just being an idiot. But those are the only three things that I would consider maybe issues with it. And again, they're probably more from personal experience. They might not even be issues to you at all. But I'm so glad that I finally bought that barbecue. Again, I'd wanted it for a long time. Took a little bit of time to save up for it, but I'm not sure I could ever go back to uh, purely cooking on a kettle. Uh, I just love cooking that thing too much. Now, I know some of you guys are sick of seeing the Kamado Joe. Uh, and me cooking on it, you want me to cook on some other stuff. And some of our recent live streams, I have actually gone back to cooking on the kettle, uh, just purely because I feel more people have one. Um, maybe not more people have one, but they're more of an accessible one, and I don't want anybody to think that they can't cook the same food that I'm cooking because they don't have a Kamado Joe. In my videos, I'm only sharing a recipe. Whatever you're cooking it in has nothing to do with it. The recipe doesn't change depending on what barbecue it is. Uh, you just need to learn them basic skills of using your barbecue and then any recipe applies. So I can't say that you won't see a lot more of the Kamado Joe in the future uh, on this channel. Uh, but I do want to try and mix it up a little bit. But I just thought I wanted to sit down, gather my thoughts. I've had a year now and I thought, right, let's see what I like about it and what I don't like about it. And more importantly, do I regret buying it or was it a good purchase? And I have to say, I think it was a good purchase. So if you're teetering on the edge of buying one, or you're maybe considering saving up for one, I hope you find that a little bit helpful. Uh, it's always good to hear other people's feedback on things. And like I say, if you're speaking to people, ask them what they don't like. Uh, if you have any questions about it or stuff you want to know, ask me. I'm more than happy to be honest with you about them. And uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next video.